Act Two of Romeo and Juliet by William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Act Two, Scene One, An Opening Place Adjoining Capulet's Garden. Enter Romeo. Can I go forward where my heart is here? Turn back, dull earth, and find thy centre out. He climbs the wall and leaps down within it. Enter Benvolio and Mercutio. Romeo! My cousin Romeo! He is wise, and on my life hath stolen him to bed. He ran this way and leapt this orchard wall. Call, good Mercutio! Nay, I'll conjure too. Romeo! Humours! Madman! Passion! Lover! Appear thou in the likeness of a sigh. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Cry but, ah, me! Pronounce but love and dove. Speak to my gossip Venus one fair word, one nickname for her purblind son and heir, young Auburn Cupid, that shot so trim when King Cophetua loved the bigger maid. He heareth not, he stirreth not, he moveth not. The ape is dead, and I must conjure him. I conjure thee by Rosalie's bright eyes, by her high forehead and her scarlet lip, by her fine foot, straight leg, and quivering thigh, and the dimensnes that there adjacent lie, that in thy likeness thou appear to us. And if he hear thee, thou wilt anger him. This cannot anger him. Twould anger him to raise a spirit in his mistress's circle of some strange nature, letting it there stand till she had laid it and conjured it down. That were some spite. My invocation is fair and honest, and in his mistress's name I conjure only but to raise up him. Come, he hath hid himself amongst these trees to be consorted with the humorous knight. Blind is his love, and best befits the dark. If love be blind, love cannot hit the mark. Now will he sit under a meddler tree, and wish his mistress were that kind of fruit as maids call meddlers when they laugh alone. Romeo, good night. I'll to my truckle bed. This field bed is too cold for me to sleep. Come, shall we go? Go then, for tis in vain to seek him here that means not to be found. Exit. Scene two, Capulet's garden. Enter Romeo. He jests at scars that never felt a wound. Juliet appears above at a window. But soft, what light through yonder window breaks? It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. Arise, fair sun, and kill the envious moon, who is already sick and pale with grief, that thou, her maid, art far more fair than she. Be not her maid, since she is envious. Her vestal livery is but sick and green, and none but fools do wear it, cast it off. It is my lady. Oh, it is my love. Oh, that she knew she were. She speaks, yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses. I will answer it. I am too bold. Tis not to me she speaks. Two of the fairest stars in all the heaven, having some business, do entreat her eyes to twinkle in their spheres till they return. What if her eyes were there, they in her head? The brightness of her cheek would shame those stars as daylight doth a lamp. Her eyes in heaven ward through the airy region stream so bright that birds would sing and think it were not night. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Ah, oh, me. She speaks. 
Oh, speak again, bright angel, for thou art as glorious to this night being o'er my head as is a winged messenger of heaven unto the white upturned wandering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy pacing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name, or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love, and I'll no longer be a Capulet. Aside, shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself, though not a Montague. What's Montague? It is nor hand, nor foot, nor arm, nor face, nor any other part belonging to a man. Oh, be some other name. What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. So Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. Romeo, doff thy name, and for that name which is no part of thee take all myself. I take thee at thy word. Call me but love, and I'll be new baptized. Henceforth I never will be Romeo. What man art thou, that thus be screened in night, so stumblest on my counsel? By a name I know not how to tell thee who I am. My name, dear saint, is hateful to myself, because it is an enemy to thee. Had I it written, I would tear the word. My ears have not yet drunk a hundred words of that tongue's utterance, yet I know the sound. Art thou not Romeo and a Montague? Neither, fair saint, if either thee dislike. How camest thou hither? Tell me, and wherefore? The orchard walls are high and hard to climb, and the place death, considering who thou art, if any of my kinsmen find thee here. With love's light wings do I o'erperch these walls, for stony limits cannot hold love out, and what love can do that dares love attempt. Therefore thy kinsmen are no let to me. If they do see thee, they will murder thee. Alack, there lies more peril in thine eye than twenty of their swords. Look thou but sweet, and I am proof against their enmity. I would not for the world they saw thee here. I have night's cloak to hide me from their sight. And but thou love me, let them find me here. My life were better ended by their hate than death prorogued wanting of thy love. By whose direction foundst thou out this place? By love, that first did prompt me to inquire. He lent me counsel, and I lent him eyes. I am no pilot. Yet wert thou as far as that vast shore washed with the furthest sea. I would adventure for such merchandise. Thou knowest the mask of night is on my face. Else would a maiden blush be paint my cheek for that which thou hast heard me speak to-night. Fain would I dwell on form. Fain, fain deny what I have spoke. But farewell, compliment. Dost thou love me? I know thou wilt say I, and I will take thy word. Yet if thou swearest, thou mayst prove false. At lovers' perjuries they say Jove laughs. O gentle Romeo, if thou dost love, pronounce it faithfully. Or if thou think'st I am too quickly won, I'll frown and be perverse and say thee nay, so thou wilt woo. But else, not for the world. In truth, fair Montague, I am too fond. And therefore thou mayst think my haviour light, but trust me, gentlemen, I'll prove more true than those that have more cunning to be strange. I should have been more strange, I must confess. But that thou overhurtst, ere I was ware my true love passion. Therefore pardon me, and not impute this yielding to light love which the dark night hath so discovered. Lady, by yonder blessed moon I swear, that tips with silver all these fruit tree tops. Oh, swear not by the moon, the inconstant moon that monthly changes in her circled orb, lest that thy love prove likewise variable. What shall I swear by? Do not swear at all. Or if thou wilt, swear by thy gracious self, which is the god of my idolatry, and I'll believe thee. If my heart's dear love— Well, do not swear. Although I joy in thee, I have no joy of this contract to-night. It is too rash, too unadvised, too sudden, too like the lightning, which doth cease to be ere one can say it lightens. 
sweet good night. This bud of love by summer's ripening breath may prove a beauteous flower when next we meet. Good night, good night, as sweet repose and rest come to thy heart as that within my breast. Oh, wilt thou leave me so unsatisfied? What satisfaction canst thou have to-night? The exchange of thy love's faithful vow for mine. I gave thee mine before thou didst request it, and yet I would it were to give again. Wouldst thou withdraw it? What purpose, love? But to be frank and give it thee again. And yet I wish but for the thing I have. My bounty is as boundless as the sea, my love as deep. The more I give to thee, the more I have, for both are infinite. I hear some noise within. Dear love, adieu. Nurse calls within. Anon, good nurse. Sweet Montague, be true. Stay but a little, I will come again. Exit. Oh, blessed, blessed night, I am afeard, being in night, all this is but a dream, too flattering sweet to be substantial. Enter Juliet above. Three words, dear Romeo, and good night indeed. If that thy bent of love be honourable, thy purpose marriage, send me word to-morrow by one that I'll procure to come to thee, where and what time thou wilt perform the right, and all my fortunes at thy foot I'll lay, and follow thee, my lord, throughout the world. Within. Madam! I come anon, but if thou means not well, I do beseech thee. Within. Madam! By and by I come, to cease thy suit and leave me to my grief. Tomorrow will I send. So thrive my soul. A thousand times good night. Exit. A thousand times the worse to want thy light. Love goes toward love as schoolboys from their books, but love from love. Towards school with heavy looks. Retiring slowly. Re-enter Juliet above. Hist! Romeo, hist! Oh, for a falconer's voice to lure this tassel gentle back again! Bondage is hoarse and may not speak aloud, else would I tear the cave where echo lies and make her airy tongue more hoarse than mine with repetition of my Romeo's name. It is my soul that calls upon my name. How silver sweet sound lovers' tongues by night, like softest music to attending ears. Romeo. My dear. At what o'clock to-morrow shall I send to thee? At the hour of nine. I will not fail. Tis twenty years till then. I have forgot why I did call thee back. Let me stand here till thou remember it. I shall forget to have thee still stand there, remembering how I love thy company. And I'll still stay to have thee still forget, forgetting any other home but this. Tis almost morning. I would have thee gone, and yet no farther than a wanton's bird that lets it hop a little from her hand, like a poor prisoner in his twisted jives, and with a silk thread plucks it back again, so loving jealous of his liberty. I would I were thy bird. Sweet so would I, yet I should kill thee with much cherishing. Good night. Good night. Parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. Exit. Sleep. Dwell upon thine eyes, peace in thy breast. Would I were sleep and peace so sweet to rest? Hence will I to my ghostly father's cell, his help to crave, and my dear hap to tell. Exit. Scene three. Friar Lawrence's cell. Enter Friar Lawrence with a basket. The green-eyed morn smiles on the frowning night, checkering the eastern clouds with streaks of light, and flecked darkness like the drunkard reels from fourth day's path and tightens fiery wheels. Non, ere the sun advance his burning eye, the day to cheer and night's dank dew to dry. I must upfill this osier cage of ours with baleful weeds and precious juiced flowers. The earth, that's nature's mother, is her tomb. What is her burying grave? That is her womb. And from her womb, children of diverse kinds, we sucking on her natural bosom find. Many for many, virtues excellent. None but for some, and yet all different. O oh, mickle is the powerful grace that lies in plants, herbs, stones, and their true qualities. For naught so vile that on the earth doth live, 
but to the earth some special good doth give, nor aught so good, but strained from that fair use, revolts from true birth, stumbling on abuse. Virtue itself turns vice, being misapplied, and vice sometimes by action dignified. Within the infant rind of this small flower, poison hath residence, and medicine power. For this, being smelt with that part, cheers each part. Being tasted, slays all senses with the heart. Two such opposing kings encamp them still, in man as well as herbs, grace and rude will. And where the worser is predominant, full soon the canker death eats up that plant. Enter Romeo. Good morrow, father. Benedicity. What early tongue so sweet saluteth me? Young son, it argues a distempered head so soon to bid good morrow to thy bed. Care keeps his watch in every old man's eye, and where care lodges, sleep will never lie. But where unbruised youth with unstuffed brain doth couch his limbs, there golden sleep doth reign. Therefore thy earthiness doth me assure thou art uproused with some distemperature, or, if not so, then here I hit it right. Our Romeo hath not been to bed to-night. That last is true, the sweeter rest was mine. God pardon sin. Wast thou with Rosaline? With Rosaline, my ghostly father. No, I have forgot that name and that name's woe. That's my good son. But where hast thou been, then? I'll tell thee, ere thou ask it me again. I have been feasting with mine enemy where on a sudden one hath wounded me that's by me wounded both are remedies within thy help and holy physic lies i bear no hatred blessed man for lo my intercession likewise steads my foe be plain good son and homily in thy drift riddling confession finds but riddling shrift then plainly know my heart's dear love is set on the fair daughter of rich Capulet. As mine on hers, so hers is set on mine, and all combined, save what thou must combine, by holy marriage. When, and where, and how, we met, we wooed, and made exchange of vow, I'll tell thee as we pass. But this I pray, that thou consent to marry us to-day. Holy Saint Francis! What a change is here! Is Rosalind that thou didst love so dear, so soon forsaken? Young men's love, then, lies not truly in their hearts, but in their eyes. Jesu Maria, what a deal of brine hath washed thy sallow cheeks for Rosaline! How much salt water thrown away in waste, to season love that doth not taste! the sun not yet thy sighs from heaven clears, the old groans ring yet in mine ancient ears. Lo, here upon thy cheek the stain doth sit of an old tear that is not washed off yet. If e'er thou wast thyself, and these woes thine, thou and these woes were all for Rosaline. And art thou changed? Pronounce these sentences, then. Women may fall, where there's no strength in men. Thou chidst me oft for loving Rosaline. For doting, not for loving, pupil mine. And bade'st me bury love. Not in a grave to lay one in, another out to have. I pray thee chide not. She whom I love now doth grace for grace and love for love allow. The other did not so. Oh, she knew well. Thy love did read by rote that could not spell. But come, young waverer, come go with me. In one respect I thy assistant be. For this alliance may so happy prove To turn our household's rancour to pure love. Oh, let us hence, I stand on sudden haste. Wisely and slow. They stumble that run fast. Exit. Scene 4. A Street. 
Enter Benvolio and Mercutio. Where the devil should this Romeo be? Came he not home to-night? Not to his father's. I spoke with his man. Ah, that same pale, hard-hearted wench, that Rosaline, torments him so that he will sure run mad. Tybalt, the kinsman of old Capulet, hath sent a letter to his father's house. A challenge on my life. Romeo will answer it. Any man that can write may answer a letter. Nay, he will answer the letter's master how he dares being dared. Alas, poor Romeo, he is already dead, stabbed with a white wench's black eye, shot through the ear with a love song, the very pin of his heart cleft with the blind bow-boy's butt-shaft. And is he a man to encounter Tybalt? Why, what is Tybalt? More than a prince of cats, I can tell you. Oh, he's the courageous captain of compliments. He fights as you sing prick song, keeps time, distance, and proportion. Rests me his minim rest. One, two, and the third in your bosom. The very butcher of a silk button. A duelist. A duelist. A gentleman of the very first house. Of the first and second cause. Ah, the immortal Passado, the Punto Reverso, the hay. The what? The pox of such antic, lisping, affected fantasticos. These new tuners of accents. By Jesu, a very good blade, a very tall man, a very good whore. Why, is not this a lamentable thing, grandsire? that we should be thus afflicted with these strange flies, these fashion-mongers, these pardonnez-moi's, who stand so much on the new form that they cannot sit at ease on the old bench? Oh, their bonds, their bonds! Here comes Romeo! Here comes Romeo! Without his row, like a dried herring. O oh, flesh, flesh, how art thou fishified! Now is he for the numbers that Petrarch flowed in. Laura to his lady was but a kitchen wench. Mary, she had a better love to berhyme her. Dido, a dowdy. Cleopatra, a gypsy. Helen and Hero, Hildings and Harlots. Thisbe, a grey eye or so. Uh, but not to the purpose. Enter Romeo. Signor Romeo! Bonjour! There is a French salutation to your French slop. You gave us the counterfeit fairly last night. Good morrow to you both. What counterfeit did I give you? The slip, sir, the slip. Can you not conceive? Pardon, good Mercutio, my business was great, and in such a case as mine a man may strain courtesy. That's as much to say. Such a case as yours constrains a man to bow in the hams. Meaning to curtsy. Thou hast most kindly hit it. A most courteous exposition. Nay, I am the very pink of courtesy. Pink for flower. Right. Why, then, is my pump well flowered? Well said. Follow me this jest now, till thou hast worn out thy pump, that when the single soul of it is worn, the jest may remain, after the wearing, soul singular. O oh, single-souled jest, solely singular for the singleness. <laughs> Come between us, good Benvolio, my wits faint. Switz and spurs, switz and spurs, or I'll cry a match. Nay, if thy wits run the wild goose chase, I have done. For thou hast more of the wild goose in one of thy wits than, I am sure, I have in my whole five. Uh, was I with you there for the goose? Thou wast never with me for anything, when thou wast not there for the goose. I will bite thee by the ear for that jest. Nay, good goose, bite not. Thy wit is a very bitter sweeting. It is a most sharp sauce. And is it not, then, well served into a sweet goose? Oh, here's a wit of cheveril that stretches from an inch narrow to an ell broad. I will stretch it out for that word broad which added to the goose proves thee far and wide a broad goose. <laughs> oh, why, is this not better now than groaning for love? 
Now art thou sociable, now art thou Romeo, now art thou what thou art, by art as well as by nature. For this driveling love is like a great natural that runs lolling up and down to hide his bubble in a hole. Stop there, stop there. Thou desirest me to stop in my tail against the hair. Thou wouldst else have made thy tail large. Oh, thou art deceived. I would have made it short, for I was come to the whole depth of my tail, and meant indeed to occupy the argument no longer. Here's goodly gear. Enter nurse and Peter. A sail, a sail, a sail. Two, two, a shirt and a smock. Peter. Anon. My fan, Peter. Good Peter, to hide her face, for her fan's the fairer face. God ye good morrow, gentlemen. God ye good den, fair gentlewoman. Is it good den? Tis no less, I tell ye, for the body hand of the dial is now upon the prick of noon. Out upon you! What a man are you! One gentlewoman that God hath made for himself to mar. By my troth, it is well said. For himself to mar, quoth he. Gentlemen, can any of you tell me where I may find the young Romeo? I can tell you. But young Romeo will be older when you have found him than he was when you sought him. I am the youngest of that name, for fault of a worse. You say well. Yea, is the worst well? Very well took, i' faith. Wisely, wisely. If you be he, sir, I desire some confidence with you. She will indict him to some supper. What hast thou found? No hair, sir, unless a hair, sir, in a Lenten pie. That is something stale and whore, ere it be spent. Sings. An old hair whore, and an old hair whore, is very good meat in Lent. But a hair that is whore is too much for a score when it whores ere it be spent. Romeo, will you come to your father's? We'll to dinner thither. I will follow you. Farewell, ancient lady, farewell. Singing. Lady, lady, lady. Exit Mercutio and Benvolio. Marry, farewell. I pray you, sir, what saucy merchant was this that was so full of his ropery? A gentleman, nurse, that loves to hear himself talk, and will speak more in a minute than he will stand to in a month. And to speak anything against me, I'll take him down. And a will lustier than he is, and twenty such jacks. And if I cannot, I'll find those that shall. Scurvy knave! I am none of his flirt gills. I am none of his skeins mates. And thou must stand by, too, and suffer every knave to use me at his pleasure. I saw no man use you at his pleasure. If I had, my weapon should quickly have been out, I warrant you. I dare draw as soon as another man, if I see occasion in a good quarrel. And the law is on my side. Now, afore God, I am so vexed that every part about me quivers. Scurvy knave! Pray you, sir, a word. And as I told you, my young lady bid me inquire you out. What she bade me say I will keep to myself. But first, let me tell ye, if ye should lead her into a fool's paradise, as they say, it were a very gross kind of behaviour, as they say, for the gentlewoman is young, and therefore, if you should deal double with her, truly it were an ill thing to be offered to any gentlewoman, and very weak dealing. Nurse, commend me to thy lady and mistress, I protest unto thee. Good heart and in faith I will tell her as much. Lord, Lord, she will be a joyful woman. What wilt thou tell her, nurse? That does not mark me. I will tell her, sir, that you do protest, which, as I take it, is a gentleman-like offer. Bid her devise some means to come to shrift this afternoon, and there she shall at Friar Lawrence's cell be shrieved and married. Here is for thy pains. No, truly, sir, not a penny. Go to, I say you shall. This afternoon, sir. Well, she shall be there. And stay, good nurse, behind the abbey wall. Within this hour my man shall be with thee, and bring thee cords made like a tackled stair, which to the high top gallant of my joy must be my convoy in the secret night. Farewell. Be trusty, and I'll quit thy pains. Farewell. Commend me to thy mistress. Now God in heaven bless thee. Hark you, sir. What sayest thou, my dear nurse? Is your man secret? Did you ne'er hear say, 
Two may keep counsel, putting one away. I warrant thee, my man's as true as steel. Well, sir, my mistress is the sweetest lady. Lord, Lord, when twas a little prating thing. Oh, there's a nobleman in town, one Paris, that would fain lay knife aboard. But she, good soul, had as lief see a toad, a very toad as see him. I anger her sometimes, and tell her that Paris is the proper man. But I'll warrant you, when I say so, she looks as pale as any clout in the versal world. Doth not Rosemary and Romeo both begin with a letter? Ay, nurse, what of that? Both with an R. Ah, mocker! What's the dog's name? R is for the dog. No, I know it begins with some other letter. And she hath the prettiest sententious of it, of you and Rosemary, that it would do you good to hear it. Commend me to thy lady. Aye, a thousand times. Exit Romeo. Peter. Anon. Peter, take my fan, and go before. Exit. Scene five. Capulet's garden. Enter Juliet. The clock struck nine when I did send the nurse. In half an hour she promised to return. Perchance she cannot meet him. That's not so. Oh, she is lame. Love's herald should be thoughts, which ten times faster glide than the sun's beams, driving back shadows over lowering hills. Therefore do nimble pinion doves draw love, and therefore hath the wind-swift Cupid's wings. Now is the sun upon the highmost hill of this day's journey, and from nine till twelve is three long hours, yet she is not come. Had she affections and warm youthful blood, she'd be as swift in motion as a ball. My words would bandy her to my sweet love, and his to me. But old folks, many fain as they were dead, unwieldy, slow, heavy, and pale as lead. Oh, God, she comes! Enter Nurse and Peter. Oh, honey, Nurse, what news? Hast thou met with him? Send thy man away. Peter, stay at the gate. Exit Peter. Now, good, sweet nurse. O oh, Lord, why look'st thou sad? Though news be sad, yet tell them merrily. If good, thou shamest the music of sweet news by playing it to me with so sour a face. I am a weary. Give me leave a while. Fie, how my bones ache! What a jaunt have I had! I would thou hadst my bones, and I thy news. Nay, come, I pray thee, speak, good, good nurse, speak. Jesu, what haste! Can you not stay a while? Do you not see that I am out of breath? How art thou out of breath, when thou hast breath to say to me that thou art out of breath? The excuse that thou dost make in this delay is longer than the tale thou dost excuse. Is thy news good or bad? Answer to that. Say either, and I'll stay the circumstance. Let me be satisfied, is't good or bad? Well, you have made a simple choice. You know not how to choose a man. Romeo. No, not he. Though his face be better than any man's, yet his leg excels all men's. And for a hand, and a foot, and a body, though they be not to be talked on, yet they are past compare. He is not the flower of courtesy, but I'll warrant him as gentle as a lamb. Go thy ways, wench, serve God. What, have you dined at home? No, no, but all this did I know before. What says he of our marriage? What of that? Lord, how my head aches! What a head have I! It beats as if it would fall in twenty pieces. My back at the other side! Oh, my back, my back! Beshrew your heart for sending me about to catch my death with jouncing up and down. If faith, I am sorry that thou art not well. Sweet, sweet, sweet nurse, tell me, what says my love? Your love says, like an honest gentleman, and a courteous and a kind and a handsome, and I warrant a virtuous. Where is your mother? Where is my mother? Why, she is within. Where should she be? How oddly thou repliest, your love says, like an honest gentleman, where is your mother? O oh, God's lady dear, are you so hot? Mary, come up, I trow. Is this the poultice for my aching bones? Henceforward do your messages yourself. Here's such a coil. Come, what says Romeo? Have you got leave to go to shrift to-day? I have. 
then hie you hence to Friar Lawrence's cell. There stays a husband to make you a wife. Now comes the wanton blood up in your cheeks. They'll be in scarlet straight at any news. Hie you to church. I must another way to fetch a ladder, by the which your love must climb a bird's nest soon when it is dark. I am the drudge, and toil in your delight. But you shall bear the burden soon at night. Go, I'll to dinner. Hie you to the cell. Oh, hie to high fortune. Honest nurse, farewell. Exit. Scene six. Friar Lawrence's cell. Enter Friar Lawrence and Romeo. So smile the heavens upon this holy act, that after hours with sorrow chide us not. Amen, amen. But come, what sorrow can, it cannot countervail the exchange of joy that one short minute gives me in her sight. Do thou but close our hands with holy words, then love-devouring death do what he dare. It is enough I may but call her mine. These violent delights have violent ends, and in their triumph die, like fire and powder, which, as they kiss, consume. The sweetest honey is loathsome in his own deliciousness, and in the taste confounds the appetite. Therefore love moderately, long love doth so. Too swift arrives as tardy as too slow. Here comes the lady. Oh, so light a foot will ne'er wear out the everlasting flint. A lover may bestride the gossamer that idles in the wanton summer air and yet not fall. So light is vanity. Enter Juliet. Good even to my ghostly confessor. Romeo shall thank thee, daughter, for us both. As much to him, else is his thanks too much. Ah, Juliet, if the measure of thy joy be heaped like mine, and that thy skill be more to blazon it, then sweeten with thy breath this neighbour air, and let rich music's tongue unfold the imagined happiness that both receive in either by this dear encounter. Conceit, more rich in matter than in words, brags of his substance, not of ornament. They are but beggars that can count their worth. But my true love is grown to such excess, I cannot sum up some of half my wealth. Come, come with me, and we will make short work. For by your leaves you shall not stay alone till holy church incorporate two in one. Exit. End of Act Two.